The heart of St. Louis. Valley Sports Midwest. The heart of the fan. St. Louis Cardinals baseball first road trip of the season continues and after dropping two of three against the Reds the Cardinals say hello to the Miami Marlins and welcome to our St. Louis based studios Valley Sports that's the Cardinals Hall of Famer Jim Edmonds I'm Dan McLaughlin and what we saw over the weekend was pitching that at least the starters, Jimmy, giving up some home runs and a lot of runs, and hopefully that changes tonight. Yeah, that's something that I have to work on. A few big mistakes with fastballs and sliders hanging down the middle. You see a fastball right here. Not a bad pitch, but to that guy it is. And then Adam right here with a kind of a little bit of a backup cutter, and this one probably could be the worst. It just sat there. These, these are the mistakes that they were making in spring training, but getting away with it. And so today, I believe Ponce is going to take the reins, and you know he's got a chip on his shoulder, and he's going to go out there. He wants to get that big win for the team. So he's in the starting rotation. A look at his numbers to finish up last year in his final four starts, and pretty darn good for Daniel Ponce de Leon. He'll get the call tonight. The big guns in the lineup. Cardinals trying to snap a two-game losing skid. The Cardinals, the Marlins coming up on Valley Sports. The Marlins tonight, it's the first of three. All three games on Valley Sports. And the Cardinals facing a lefty tonight. That could be a good thing for St. Louis. Got two left jabs. I'm calling them the two big boppers. Look at the numbers against left-handed pitching. Number two and number four all time right now with the active players. And we've got a couple guys behind them that can do damage also. A lot of righties in the lineup on both sides. The Marlins, a team that last year surprised everybody by going to postseason play. Bigger expectations in 2021. Cards Marlins coming up. Cardinals and the Marlins on Valley Sports. Looks to be a beautiful day in Miami. No surprise, 71 degrees. We're told the roof is open. And along with Jim Edmonds, the Cardinals Hall of Famer, Jim Hayes with us as well. I'm Dan McLaughlin, and we're in the studios of Valley Sports in St. Louis. The Cardinal lineup with Tommy Edmond, Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado in the first inning. Then Paul DeYoung, Tyler O'Neill, Yadier Molina, Dylan Carlson, Austin Dean, his first start of 2021. And the pitcher batting ninth, Daniel Ponce de Leon. Cardinals will face a lefty tonight and a good one. Young prospect by the name of Trevor Rogers. He was really good in spring training. Yeah, I believe he had the second most strikeouts in all of baseball during spring training. It's pretty impressive, especially because not only you have big leaguers, but you have the best of the best minor leaguers firing balls and trying to make a point in spring training, trying to impress everyone. Yesterday, game number 150 of the young career of Tommy Edmond. And the last time that he saw the Marlins in regular season play, popped a home run, went two for two. A career 317 hitter against lefties. Do you remember that spring training that I was on the field a lot and you were doing some games in the booth. Oh yeah. He was putting on a show. Yeah. So this doesn't surprise you that he is in this spot does it. Not at all. Made some really good plays defensively over the weekend in Cincinnati. Like I said uh, on the pregame postgame I think we're not losing a whole lot with losing uh, Colton Wong with Tommy Edmond at second base. I really really believe this kid is going to be really good defensively and I think he's going to be really good at the top of the lineup. Four straight balls to start the game. In his career Paul Goldschmidt a 303 hitter against Miami. Collected career hit number 1400 during the series against Cincinnati and that's five straight balls. He's one home run shy of 250. He's about two inches shy of 250 right. Right off Opening the wall. Day, right off the top of the wall. 
And the 1 0 pitch to Paul Goldschmidt. Well, you can see why this young man right here throws some strikeouts. There's a little crossfire, little three quarter. The ball kind of comes across the inside part of the plate to the righties, and he's throwing 96. And I'm sure if he reaches back, there's going to be more in the tank. Well, Alfaro, after six straight balls, calls time and says, let's go settle down our young lefty. Well, and the thing you got to like if you're Mattingly watching this, he's not missing all over the place. He's missing in. He's just cutting across it a little bit. It's not like they're setting up away and he's firing balls up and in and vice versa. So, you know, you, sometimes it takes a little bit. You get a little adrenaline out there, throwing a little too hard. First game of the year for him. Kind of tough to manage that sometimes. And you're going to find a guy that's as disciplined as anybody at the plate since the COVID shutdown of last year and then coming back. Goldschmidt hitting 309 combined last year to what he's done at the start of this year. His average has not dropped below 300 at any point. So as consistent as any hitter in the game and Rogers almost threw that away and Aguilar some nifty footwork over there. What you got to do right here if you're the Cardinals especially after yesterday you can't run yourself into an out when you have received six straight pitches that are balls and right there they're picking over taking a chance that maybe Tommy would be running. I hope not. Like I said, if you run into an out right here, basically the whole bench gets deflated for a minute and says, ah, here we go again. You have to keep your guys on the base and you've got to figure out a way to score runs. They've been doing a really nice job of that, but scoring early, giving those pitchers a little bit of a break. That's now seven straight balls. Would you turn him loose on three and oh even after seven straight. <laughs> I don't know. I think I let him in his hands. You know what it all depends. We talk about it all the time. Are you comfortable facing this guy. Have you faced him. Do you know what he's trying to do. If not no. Eight straight balls back to back walks. And I would have said he's not swinging no matter what. So yes I would have given him the green light because he would probably have taken it. You got to make him pay now two straight walks to start the game. Corey Dickerson a former gold glover in left Marte the former pirate in center Adam Duvall the former red and giant in right Anderson Rojas Bertie Aguilar on the infield and Alfaro is behind the plate around the horn is presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Here's Nolan Arenado. I'll tell you what I think this guy has got a really good idea and I know he's throwing eight straight balls he probably won't swing. But this is the guy who yes. might let it go. Turn him loose. Right here. It doesn't have to I'm be with a perfect you. strike for him to take a good swing. <clears throat> Can't find the strike zone right now. And the strike zone, I'm sure, is closing in on this young lefty, Rogers, the number six prospect in their system, according to Baseball America. He had 19 innings 29 strikeouts in the spring also that included a 10 strikeout performance. And there's the strike. Sometimes you need to go to that breaking ball to slow yourself down. The breaking ball as a pitcher will make you gather yourself. Mechanics have to be better and you have to be on time to throw a strike. Sometimes that helps. It was a shot of Mel Stoudemire Junior. The pitching Might coach. See another one right here. How do you get a guy back on track if you if you're Alfaro do you go to off speed pitches are you trying to find anything that you can to find the strike zone. Well I go take his pulse right now to be honest with you make yeah. sure he's, he's OK he's not going to have a heart attack. Uh, second of all yeah I think you you know you slow play it you they tried to pick over already a couple breaking balls maybe a change up. And or you tell ball. him throw it as hard as you can. That's 98 right down the middle. All right, Nato, 25 games in Miami. Hadn't seen the Marlins all that much in what is now extending in his career. And has only hit 191 at this ballpark. That's saying something. 2 2. And Nolan hits a high fly ball into center. Marte calling off Birdie and the out. You know, everyone has those ballparks, right? Everyone has their least favorite place to hit in the league. And. Hopefully for us the next three days that's not Arenado's spot but you never know. Here's Paul DeYoung game two of the series against the Reds couple of solo home runs. 
He's played five games in Miami hitting all five home run has driven in four two runners on and a check on Tommy Edmond at second infield with a shift and the outfield is straight away. And that step foul by DeYoung. Good swing right there by Pauly. Well, Rogers last year got knocked around in a start against Atlanta. Five runs in the first two innings. It was back to back singles to open up the third. Then he would strike out the next six that he faced. And he said, you know what? That was a turning point and a learning experience. And now this may be a learning experience here in this first inning. Well, I, I mean, it's hard to say. I don't know what he's got in the tank as far as fastball, right? But some of these kids, they have such good arms, and they're trying to kind of just place pitches early on, trying to, like, nibble a little bit, 95, 96. Let me put this on the corner, and it's not working. So all of a sudden, he rears back those 98, 99 right down the middle. That's what you need. You don't have to pick when you throw that hard. Just throw it hard and let them hit it and see if they can hit it. That gets through Alfaro into the backstop. You can see right there he let up a little bit trying to throw a strike trying to make a perfect pitch just came up short. So runners at second and third. It's like he's just not finishing his. Yeah. I at agree. And it's just like I don't know if you could get it from that angle but it's like all of a sudden right at the end he just kind of lets up with his arm speed and that'll cause the ball to go straight in the ground because your body's already leaning forward and your arms just coming around late. So the first baseman Aguilar playing in and a shift on the left side of the infield. No one else except Aguilar on the right side. That's 97 up and away. Both teams come into this series at one and two. Cardinals won their opener then dropped the next two to the Reds. Miami opened up with Tampa. And dropped two or three. Now why would you have Miami and Tampa playing each other in the first series when you've got cold weather and snow falling in Detroit and Cincinnati. I heard you talking about that either yesterday or the day before and it blows me away to this point. We're still trying to figure out why they don't schedule all the warm teams to host all the games in the first week at least. Is it that difficult or is it just not fair. I, I don't get it. it. Seems logical right. Dome stadiums, warm weather cities. There's got to be enough to get you at least three quarters of the way through the league. And then there's got to be some other places that are going to be decent, better than other places in April. So three and two, the count with two runners on. And DeYoung takes a ball low, and the bases are loaded. Three walks here in the first. What would be your advice to a guy that does strike out his fair share in Tyler O'Neill you've seen three walks and you want to strike first what are you doing in this at bat. Well the thing for Tyler though he's young and he has trouble picking pitches in the zone is I would tell him to get up a little bit taller and try to get on top of a ball against a guy like this. I remember when Brad Penny used to pitch to us for some reason his ball was sneaky and it and it was it rode a little bit on you so. He's the only guy in the league that I stood up against higher and literally tried to swing down on and I ended up having a lot of success one year against him even though he was still sneaky I was and I was hitting balls the left field but I was getting on top of him hitting line drives off the left field wall and so you can there's just certain guys in the league you cannot swing up against and he was one of them. This is how he reminds me right here if he's going to be up in the zone in 97 cross firing same kind of stuff you want to just flatten out your swing a little bit. You're not looking for a home run here. You're just trying to put the ball in play and get a run in. Well, for the Cardinals and the Marlins tonight, the 200th meeting between these two teams. And the first was all the way back May 14th, 1993. And the Cardinals have had very good success in Miami. Matter of fact, they have won 12 of the last 16 down there. And that gets through Alfaro. Edmund will score, and it's one to nothing, Cardinals. That's got to be caught. Well, but you got to wonder if he's a little jumpy back there. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> everything he puts down ends up in a different spot here. 
It's a split fingered fastball and it just takes off on him. You can see he's kind of leaning right there. The catcher's leaning left, trying to get that ball down and in. And it just goes the other way and he gets caught. So one nothing St. Louis runners now at second and third for O'Neill. Infield back with the exception of Aguilar at first base. Pass ball charge to Alfaro. Outfield especially in left Corey Dickerson very deep for Tyler O'Neill who homered over the weekend. The one one. That's what you can't do and I'm not getting on Tyler O'Neill there but if you're going to swing and that's the hardest thing I still think the hardest thing to do as a young player is to pick pitches in the zone and then not go after fastballs is pick your spots. You have to swing at strikes and you got to swing at pitches you can handle. We have to get this run in one two right down the middle and struck him out. So the first strikeout for Rogers. This is just a really good four seam fastball away. And this is something as a young player too. I, I remember doing and, and I talked to a lot of younger players even all the way down to Landon's age at 14 15. You can't expect the pitcher to throw a ball. You can't. You have to expect that he's going to throw a strike every time he lets go of the ball. You can't just sit up and go. I don't know what he's going to throw. So I'm hoping it's not a strike this time. You got to be ready to hit especially with guys on third base. Yachty ready to hit and a drive into center. Marte back and it's off the wall. Two runs will score. And Yachty or Molina will trot into second base standing up with a double. And that passes Hall of Famer Johnny Bench sole possession. Eighth all time among primary catchers with that double, and that is number 382. Let me take a look at this replay right here. Not a good replay for what I'm talking about, but he's ready. He's on time. He's out in front. He knows he's going to get something firm. He might even got a little bit of a hard split, and he's ready to hit. Got a pitch to hit and hammered it. And then a few feet away, one of the deepest parts in the park from a home run. But a tough play on. The rebound with the bare hand right there. <laughs> you don't see that very often. <laughs> that is a pick me up for St. Louis to get that number 382. In terms of doubles for Yadier Molina, not Dylan Carlson. Well, you think about walks in the game of baseball, especially at the major league level. And in this situation, three walks in the inning, and all three have come around to score. One ball and two strikes with two outs. The switch hitting Dylan Carlson. He homered in the season opener against the Reds. The one two. Off the plate. This is turning into a very long first inning for Rogers. 28 pitches. You'd love to see the Cardinals get into the Miami bullpen. And that group, the first, uh, fourth worst bullpen ERA in baseball since two out, uh, 2018. They have had their issues there. Just got a piece. I know just like you you're excited to watch Dylan get a full season under his belt see the adjustments he can make. Yeah, I feel like it's like when I was watching Harry when he first came up you're like watching your kids play and you get nervous for them you want them to do everything right. So sometimes these at bats are tough to watch. Three and two Molina at second base. Good 
see there they shade him a bit in the outfield right center infield playing him to pull. Three and two the count on Carlson. And Dylan hits a rope down the left field line oh, and yanked it foul. That hurts right there. Rogers looks to be a little shell shocked here in this first inning. 32 pitches right now in the first inning. Not what you want as a starting pitcher in your first outing of the year. Marlins had a rare off day yesterday on a Sunday in Major League Baseball. That does not happen. Crazy, isn't it? I don't think I've ever heard of that before. That happened once, I think, last year, too. But other than that, I don't think I've ever seen that. And the 3 2 again. He walked him. It's now four walks. Here in the first inning. It's a good at bat by Dylan right there. He fought off a couple, couple of tough pitches, a split down low. Could have easily been swung over the top of and take that walk. It's a, it's a great at bat. That's going to get the bullpen up and throwing. Now what they wanted to do here in the first inning. Ross Detweiler, the lefty there on the left, standing up, going behind the pitcher, warming up. Ross is young man from the St. Louis area. And that was Curtis throwing John Curtis the right hander. Here's Austin Dean. Well Justin Williams tough weekend in Cincinnati 0 for 9 and with the lefty on the mound Dean getting a chance here tonight. I like this. This is a perfect opportunity for Austin Dean right here to play. Runners at first and second. Good change up. A ball and a strike on Dean. One and two the count. Saw Dean briefly last year in the truncated season. A couple of starts in left field made the club out of spring this year. The former Miami Marlin. The one two. Chased a pitch up and a strikeout. Couple of strikeouts in the inning. And a long top of the first for Rogers. Highlighted by double number 382 from Yadier Molina. He passes Johnny Bench. Start of the season, John Gant going in game two, then Jack Flaherty in the third and final game in Miami, in the final game of the road trip, and then the home opener on Thursday. Last season, at one point, Daniel Ponce de Leon was sent down to the minor leagues. Eight starts, but then he came back up. He was much better. What was the difference for him? Well, I, I think that sometimes he just gets a little out of whack and throws the ball around the zone. He, cha he challenges a lot of guys. You see the Hyundai pitch arsenal, a lot of four seam fastballs. He's got a good fastball, good riding fastball. I don't really think he ever gets hurt challenging guys. I think he just gets hurt falling behind. And you know what? More walks than hits, I would believe, if you're just watching and not looking at the stat sheet. But if he can just go out there and pitch, like he's capable of pitching and not worried about anything else. I think he'll be in good shape. Don Mattingly's lineup tonight. Dickerson at the top, which he'll do against right handed pitching. Then Marte, Aguilar, Duvall, Anderson, Rojas, Alfaro, Birdie, and the pitcher, Rogers. This team is like a cluster of players from around the league. It's the way they've assembled it. Well, Dakota Hudson, we know he's done for the year with Tommy John out for the season. KK will throw 
in Jupiter tomorrow. Miles Michaelis shoulder injury so they open up the year on the IL and that gives a shot to Daniel Ponce de Leon. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes. He's got a good fastball. He struck out 45 last year and 35 of those coming with his fastball. That was the highest among all starters with at least 29 innings last year. There you go. And he likes the pitch at the top of the zone. You can see right there the velocity isn't special. It's something about him being sneaky. He hides the ball a little bit. And he does. He rares back and throws fastballs no matter what. Guys sometimes look for that slider and they get the heater and have no chance. Two balls, one strike on Dickerson. You will see a lot of his at bats, Dickerson, go to two strikes. And now you're going to see him choke up. You rarely see that in today's day and age. Puts a premium on putting the ball in play. He'll spread out, doesn't strike out very often. The 2 2 pitch spoiled. Change up right there. Quite the opposite. You start to see guys adjust with two strikes. You want to keep pounding the fastball. You don't want to give them a chance to see the off speed pitch out of the hand and make adjustments. Usually, when a guy spreads out and chokes up, he gets to see the ball a little bit longer than the guy that wants to swing with the normal, the normal stance. So just stay nice and firm and go right at him. Just like that. Got him with the strikeout. And the first of the night for Daniel Ponce de Leon. I know you grew up idolizing that man. He is the manager of the year a season ago, Don Mattingly. There have been three managers of the year from the Marlins Jack McKeon in 2003, Joe Girardi in 2006, and last year, Don Mattingly. Starling Marte is seven for his last ten. Always seemed to be a thorn in the Cardinals' side when he was with Pittsburgh. And that did hit him. Ball ran up and in, so Marte hit by the pitch. Four-seam fastball. He's trying to get inside just a little bit. Perfect place to get hurt, right in the edge of the jersey. And he is a threat to steal. Well, and then you also have Jesus Aguilar, who is, I think, the Cardinal killer. This guy seems to hit big home runs against the Cardinals. Joined a All-Star campaign when he was with Milwaukee. Looks like he lost a couple of pounds. It's a big boy. Marlins feel that he's been very steady in Miami. Picked him up off of waivers from Tampa Bay. And more or less the everyday first baseman for Miami here in 2021. What do you got here on 6'3, 277? It's a big man. <laughs> First pitch to him is a strike on the outside corner. For the Marlins last year, first trip to the postseason since 2003. They went up to Wrigley, swept the Cubs, and then they themselves were swept by the Braves. That was their first winning season since 2009. Marte is short lead at first, shift on the infield. And that's up and in. Jimmy, it was July 21st. They left for a six day road trip. Then they faced an eight day quarantine in Philadelphia, and it turned into a 23 day road trip. They had 60 roster moves on that trip alone. <laughs> 60. How do they have that many players? 
on the season they made 174 roster moves. 174 is they dealt with covid and trying to get players healthy. Don Mattingly even said there were times he didn't even know who was in the the clubhouse. They had picked up a guy <laughs> and he's in uniform and they were told go play. 18 players made their major league debut. Donnie had to have a secretary last year. So these two teams were hit the hardest by COVID last year in Major League Baseball, and amazingly, both teams got into postseason play. That is no wonder he won the manager of the year. Yep. They had nine different starting pitchers in the first nine games. Aguilar hammers one out to center backing up a step or two it's Carlson Marte back to the bag at first and that's out number two around the horn is presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers O'Neill Carlson and Dean in the outfield Arnato to young Edmund Goldschmidt on the infield and Yadier Molina nine time gold glover is behind the plate. Cardinals made two errors but neither resulted in a run or many extra pitches over the weekend. We saw some really good defense and I think that'll be night in and night out with the Cardinals. I think of where the errors were. That's how good the defense played. When you can't think of some bad plays and you watch a lot of baseball. You know your defense has improved. Now it's Adam Duvall. Duvall had a nine RBI game against the Marlins last year. He had three home runs. He had a two run shot, three run homer, and a slam. As he played last year with the Atlanta Braves, nine runs batted in. I always thought this kid was going to be a stud when he was in Cincinnati. <clears throat> Felt like he just wasn't playing enough, or he just was one click off of getting there. Started with the Giants too. 2014. Had a pinch hit homer on Saturday. That was the first Marlins hit and home run. 33 and 31 home runs in 16 and 17, and then just nothing really after that. And like I said, you know, sometimes you get comfortable, and then you you have to move around a little bit. You lose that comfort zone. That'll carry out to Dylan Carlson. He'll make the catch. Marlon Strand a runner. Daniel Ponce de Leon leads it off when we return. On Valley Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. And by Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the St. Louis area. Find yours at your Mid-America Chevy dealer. We're in our St. Louis-based studios of Valley Sports. Cardinals in Miami Daniel Ponce de Leon takes a ball and we're underway here in inning number two three nothing our score Rogers walked four in the first inning Cardinals sent eight to the plate Ponce de Leon here, then Edmund and Goldschmidt. Well, outside corner. That'll go Rogers' way, and he picks up his third strikeout. No comment. <laughs> well, if it's one through eight, and that is the call against him, you're frustrated. When it's the pitcher, everybody just kind of shrugs and says, well, eh, okay. Yeah, I get it. And then if I'm the pitcher, I'm saying, hey, I want that pitch. You bet. When I go back out there, by the way. The thing to me is, though, I don't, what I don't like is if, if you're a pitcher, like for Rodgers, and he's made a couple of decent pitches out over the plate, and he hasn't gotten them, 
then you throw the breaking ball way around the plate and you get that one. So it's like, what do you do? You know, do you keep flipping breaking balls out there? Or and because your fastball, you have to be on the plate so far the way he's calling the game. Edmund, Ooh. hot shot to short. Rojas, what a play. He is a slick defender and shows us why. What a play there on the backing end. This is one heck of a play. This is a base hit written all over it off the bat. He doesn't even make it look tough. Nice good hop. See that? You stay down first, and then you come up. You start the glove up. You can't go down fast enough. And a strike to Paul Goldschmidt. Walked and scored on the double by Molina. Mentioned this in our open, but the Cardinals have as good a one-two punch against left-handed pitcher as uh, the game will offer. Slugging percentage, Arenado 601, Goldschmidt 589. Yeah, this kid's got a good fastball. You can see right there. Tied Polly up a little bit. And the 0-2 is a fly ball to left. Dickerson there. So Rogers will see if he settles in. Gets the strikeout. Great play behind him. And the flyout. One, two, three. Go the Cardinals. Miami Cardinal starters have worked a total of just 12 innings over their first three ball games with so the cards are hoping Daniel Ponce de Leon can go deep into tonight's game Ponce has had issue issues with high pitch counts but Mike Schultz says he's confident in him Schilt told me we've seen him do it in 2018 he threw a no hitter for seven innings he's got plenty good stuff he just needs to be in the zone with his fastball and land his curve the key for him is don't make it bigger than it is, Dan. The bullpen has seen a ton of work in the early going this season. They could use a little breather. All right, Jimmy, thank you. So those combined 12 innings of work, three starts by Flaherty, Wainwright, Martinez. As Anderson looks at a ball, the sixth lowest total by the first three St. Louis starters to open a season since 1920. Flaherty went four and a third. Wainwright had six up, six down, then the wheels came off, went two and two thirds. And Carlos Martinez yesterday with five innings. There's a check swing and a strike. I, I don't think the score, though, is indicative of what we saw from Carlos yesterday. No, and you know what? I, I think they, and none of it was as bad as it seemed, but I can't imagine it being any worse than when we opened up in Denver one year. Way back in the day, man, we got hammered for three straight days. We thought everything was over. That and was I the last time it was that that poor to start a season. And one, and guess what? Playoffs just came around the corner. You just <laughs> never know. <laughs> three days doesn't make the season, but I'll tell you what. We went home. It felt like we just like got our butt chewed by a lot of Tony La Russa and the rest of the league, and we had to regroup a little bit. It was scary. The 2 2 pitch. Anderson off the end of the bat and a fly ball to Dylan Carlson. In that season of 2001, first three games in Denver, your club allowed 32 runs. So that's why you felt shell shocked. I'm shocked that it was only 32, to yeah. be honest with you, because it felt a lot more. I, I, one of the scores was 15, I know that. I, I, you would ask me, my memory serves. I swear I would have said 15, 10, and 12, and 13, like three games in a row. There were some double digits, and whew, it was so ugly. It was so bad, we thought they cheated. It was that bad. It was ridiculous. Every ball they threw up there, they got smoked. This really is the captain of the Marlins, and that is Miguel Rojas, really good player. Used to idolize Martin Prado, who played a similar role for the club is the leader of the Marlins. Marlins gave him a two year deal toward the end of 2019 a vesting option for 22. And that was announced on the same day as Don Mattingly got his extension. And he played for Don Mattingly in Los Angeles. 
those two are very very close. I know you had a close relationship with Tony La Russa, kind of father to son. And that's what they talk about with Mattingly and Miguel Roas. Gold Glove finalist in 2020. We saw why in that great play to rob Tommy Edmond. Huh. Evansville, Indiana, Don Mattingly. It's home to the Purple Aces. Or Andy Bennis became a number one <laughs> overall pick. More, more of those nicknames. How do we run into that every time we do a game? Popped up Molina near the screen and out of play. By the way, we are not in Miami, but I can tell you they have taken out the fish tank behind home plate. You know, I haven't been to the new Miami ballpark yet. It's beautiful. So I didn't really miss the fish tank a whole lot. The home run sculpture is no longer there. It's actually outside the ballpark. No longer the fish tank and they darkened up the seats. New ownership came in. And a 3 2 pitch. Spoiled. Ponce de Leon is one career start against the Marlins six scoreless innings that was June 19th of the 2019 campaign. Cardinals eventually won that game in 11 innings and a Paul Goldschmidt walk off homer. So this really it's it's early in the season obviously you're in your first week but this is a start where you'd like to see a starter give you some stability after what took place against Cincinnati. Yeah and you'd like to get him into the fourth or fifth and right now he's in a good spot with pitches 28 without in the second inning but got to stay away from the three two counts and the foul balls. The problem with him is he gets a lot of foul balls because he has that sneakiness and that's how you build up a pitch count. As far as if you're the Marlins players, but you just like to see him attack the zone and try to get some contact, get some ground balls, fly balls, whatever it takes. Good pitch here, and it's one of those pitches you're like, how did he hit that? So the base hit to right, first hit. Looked like for the Edgar, Marlins. Edgar Renteria swing right there. Just ho hum, yeah. little, throw the bat at the ball, and another hit. Here's Alfaro. Three nothing Cardinals three runs in the top of the first. And the first pitch to Alfaro is taken a bit low. Jimmy always says Danny Mac give me your key to the game. So, so Danny, here it is. What is your Toyota key to the game today. Establish the series with the starter. Get back to getting innings, quality innings from your starter. I like it. Kind of calm everything down after a lot of offense from the uh, Reds over the weekend. It was like a lot of offense and both. Ooh, oh well, went through the net and both sides, except for kind of the last day. Would that be yesterday for the the Cardinals? But wow, there was some offense flying around that league. About you and I, yard. you know, we had our production meeting last night going over film. Didn't end until about 2.33 in the morning, and we came up with that key to the game. Still shocked at the way the ball was flying in Cincinnati this early in the season. I thought they were going to deaden the ball. <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing. Man, they must have deadened it. Not enough. No. The dead the ball but they made the bats harder. You know what though these guys are so strong everybody's <laughs> coming out throwing ninety six to ninety eight. If you can't. center a ball it's going to jump. Yeah and then they're going to start making the infielders play on the grass and the outfielders are going to have to stand back on the wall and then give you more places to hit. <laughs> oh boy. One one pitch Alfaro pops it foul. He's part of the return from the Phillies for JT Realmuto. 
Got a big arm. You now at one point you look at the Marlins they had Yelich Stanton Ozuna in their outfield and JT Romuto behind the plate. That's some talent. They do it every 10 years they find some group of guys to put together and. Seems like three or four years later they're all gone. Here's a one two pitch to Alfaro. Daniel really pounding the outside portion of the strike zone. Yeah, and he'll, every now and then he'll throw that fastball middle in, in, tie you up a little bit. I don't think his slider is as sharp as his fastball is sneaky. And so he really gets on you as a, a, a fastball gets on you as a good sneaky fastball that ties you up. And then that slider, it seems like they always get a swing at it. I believe that's probably why he gets after it more with fastballs. It just comes right at you right there and a swing and a miss held on to by Molina and the strikeout number two you know it's it's really funny I don't know if we'll see that again but you can tell when a fastball is sneaky watch him pull his hands at the last second he doesn't really get a good finish he starts to swing and you'll see a lot of guys pull their hands in just a little bit and you could barely see it it's almost like a hitch that's telling you uh oh like I, I'm late and I got to get my hands inside the ball as fast as possible to get some piece of this. And so that's telling you his fastball is sneaky and it's looks it looks a lot harder than the 92 that the radar gun showing. Here is John Birdie. Had a cup of coffee with the Blue Jays in 2018 Marlins gave him a shot in 19. He kind of their super utility player can play anywhere on the field. Grew up near Detroit playing a lot of hockey as well. Blues hockey on the main channel tonight and the return of the captain Petro Ooh. to Scott trade for the first time. Don Mattingly has talked about that because of a truncated season you may see more days off for players getting back into the flow of 162 and birdie would be that super utility player. So play more than just you know just a traditional guy off the bench. Well, you got a guy like this, and if he can play at multiple positions, he can play 100 games very easily. Yep. I think Tony La Russa did that exceptionally well with a lot of guys. Skip like Schumacher for Aaron a while. Miles. Aaron Miles, another one. There was a few guys over the years. Skip eventually worked himself into being an everyday second baseman, which he hated, but never said a word. Nope. And was in center field in the final out of 2011. Could play anywhere. And now a coach with San Diego. A count of two balls and one strike. But there is an art to keeping those guys sharp. And especially in the National League. If there's no DH and you're double switching. Well, yeah, and the way Tony liked to play the numbers too, especially with the late in the game pinch hitters, knew certain guys struggled against certain guys, so he would always get Aaron Miles or Skip or someone out there. He loved that guy that could switch hit and put the ball in play, give you a good at bat. Daniel Descalso was that player for a while. You think he would not love Nagowski? Oh. <laughs> He'd give he'd find a way to get him some <laughs> he'd starts play every day. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow he'd get in the game every single day. The 2 2 pitch by Daniel Ponce de Leon. It was Sunday night baseball I was watching last night and my first time at really taking a, a long hard look at Tony the Russo wearing a White Sox hat. Number 20 uniform and the number 22. What is that all about? I don't know. I think maybe number 10 is already retired over there. <laughs> it used to be number 10 I believe over there too. So Tony in that dugout pacing up and down kicking the uh, cups and the sunflower seeds. Tell you what he got a good look at one of the best players ever and two of the best players current on that angel team. We well, got Mike Trout ever. Pujols. And Albert and, and Otani. And Otani. 
Do you see what Otani did last night? He yeah, was I, hitting jumped, over. I, I jumped out of my seat when he hit that ball. 451 feet. First pitch. It's the hardest hit ball in StatCast this year. For those who missed it, he pitched starting pitcher for the Angels, and he hit second last night in the lineup. Love it. Fastball again. Couple of strikeouts in this inning. Three thus far for Daniel Ponce de Leon. Coming up, Nolan Arenado. Great seeing him and Cardinal. Make sure and download the MLB app to get in-game video highlights, live pitch by pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboards, and more for your Cardinals. Tony the Rooster, by the way, pick number 22. It's the same number he last wore as a White Sox minor league manager in 78 and 79 in Knoxville and in Iowa. Mokata wears number 10, and Tony said, I can't take that from one of my players who's been here, so that's why he wears number 22. Pretty impressive. Here's Nolan Arenado. Had a home run over the weekend and pulls that foul. That was his 100th home run in his career on the road. And I bring that up because you do wonder about not playing, you know, your home games in Denver, in Coors Field. I don't think it's going to hurt this guy at all. This guy's got some power and he's got that kind of swing. He's going to hit his home runs wherever he plays. I feel like the ball doesn't carry in Colorado like it used to. Just now you got to hit it with those balls that are a little bit softer with the uh, humidifier, humidor, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. And that seems a little odd to me, too, that they would allow that to happen. It's kind of weird that you build ballparks and then you have it bigger, smaller, short porch, long porch. You got guys putting up huge numbers in certain ball ballparks and not others. And then all of a sudden you're going to take the ball and make it softer and breaks his bat and it's a base hit out to left went down to get it that is one of the things I've noticed about Nolan is that on his home run against Cincinnati over the weekend watch him go down to get this his adjustments yes he has the ability to adjust and put the barrel on the ball still and he on this pitch in particular even though he hit this ball off the end of the bat he's able to let that top hand go and get extension with that bottom hand and he gets the barrel to the ball even when he's fooled it's amazing to watch now Paul DeYoung well with Nolan you know time will tell what kind of hitter he is when he's consistently away from cores but in his last 100 road games he slugged 488. And that's 10th best in the National League in that time. That's better than Harper, Machado, Goldschmidt. So we'll see if that carries over. Let me see. That's what we were talking about with that swing. Paulie's got a little bit of that uppercut right there, unlike a lot of right-handers. And when a guy throws this hard, you're creating such an angle with the bat going up and the ball coming at you that your margin of error is so big. You don't have a lot of margin of error anyways as far as the ball being round and the bat being round. I was showing some kids the other day about when you put the ball on the bat, it's literally the size of your smaller than your fingernail is the contact zone, is the contact spot. Like I'm talking about maybe the tip of your finger. So think of how many times and up and down you can miss that ball a little bit. It keeps you from hitting the ball hard and then your bat angle if it's going up too much you're creating even a bigger discrepancy between something coming straight in at you and being able to hit it flush fastball and struck him out number four tonight for Rogers and while we have a moment Remind you that T-Mobile is your ticket to the game. And now through the end of today, customers can score a free MLB TV subscription at T-Mobile.com slash MLB. It's really funny. If you think about what I was saying, Danny, and I've never done this before, and I was trying to talk to my son about this the other day. If you take a bat and you take a ball, 
and you put them on on each other, right? Take this bat here and you put this ball, just set it flush on there. The contact spot of the ball and the bat is so small. It's unbelievable. And so now you start to think to yourself, how do I create my best chance of, of bringing these two together to create the most bang for the buck, basically, the most contact? And any time the bat angle is going up or down or dragging or anything, you're just subtracting all your chances of hitting the ball flush. O'Neal with a high fly ball into left field. Arenado back to the bag at first. So what you're telling me, it truly is a game of inches, if centimeters. not even, yeah, smaller than the uh, well, what's inch or two we're talking what's about. What's amazing is after all the years that I played baseball and I looked at that, it still blows me away is how difficult it is to hit and how some guys are so good at it. Now, Faro had something in his eye, and so the home plate umpire, Quinn Wolcott, called time, and now Molina will dig in. Two out, two run double back in the first, and with that double, he passed Johnny Bench all time in doubles at 382, sole possession of eighth on that list for catchers. After tonight, he needs seven games caught to reach 2,000 for his career. And he'll be the only catcher in the history of baseball 2000 games caught with one team. Amazing. Just the longevity but to be able to be healthy enough to do that and to do it with one team yeah. in this day and age of free agency. It's unbelievable. One ball one strike. That's what that big fastball does for you right there. It gets some of these guys cheating a little bit. If you can throw that secondary pitch for a strike, it makes it really tough on the hitters. Probably another one right here. And Yachty got it again. And the strikeout. So two in the inning. That's five so far through five. And it's three nothing. File brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Visit Kia.com and a look at Starts as a pro by Daniel Ponce de Leon. Well, he worked his way up pretty quick, didn't he? What a road it has been, too, for Daniel to get to this point. He's got a new book out. It talks about his journey to Major League Baseball. He was drafted four times. He had stints at three different colleges. Went to Tampa High School. Off to the University of Arizona. Transferred to Cypress College. Drafted by Cincinnati but late in the draft. Then enrolled at the University of Houston to get drafted higher. Agreed to terms with the Cubs in 2013. There's a ground ball that's hit to short. Signed the paperwork but failed his physical. And then the NCAA ruled him ineligible. So then he had to transfer to Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. That's NAIA. <laughs> I believe that was the very first ground ball of the game. Not to interrupt what you're going with. So you're saying there's a chance. And you're saying it was a long road for Ponce. It was a long road. A long road. And then you had the scary incident at AAA with the comebacker off the bat of Victor Caratini that sent him to the ICU. And remember, he used to wear goggles to protect himself and has ditched those. And it's a count of two balls no strikes on Corey Dickerson first time through the lineup. He struck out three allowed a base hit. To Rojas and then hit Starling Marte. 
And the 2-0. There's a strike two and one. <laughs> Hit the other way. That'll carry to Tyler O'Neill for the catch. And that's out number two. Brings in Marte. And Marte takes a strike on the outside corner. He's been on base in eight of his last 11 plate appearances. And now he's hit for the second time. I mean, I really have to understand, like, think about this. Do you really think he's trying to hit you? It's a four seam fastball. It's a three to nothing game. Come on. You only getting hit in the shirt. And I'm taking my base to be honest with you. I'd rather have that than a bruise in the ribs. By the way, uh, Nicholas Castellanos suspended by baseball for two games. Yeah, I didn't agree with that. I, I, I agree that you should have kicked him out. I agree that I think he we'll all agree that he probably started that fight and it was unnecessary. I don't I don't really think that he should be suspended for two games. That's just me. I don't think he did anything that drastic. I understand. Kick him out of the game. That was a good for the day. You put your team in a bad predicament. You put yourself in a bad predicament. You know, it's like in hockey. You take a bad penalty. You did a really dumb thing. You go over here for a little while and they're good. Don't you don't suspend someone for that. He didn't throw any punches. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't even really do much other than celebrate right there. He got to get a taunting call, and that's it. That's on the infield. Goldschmidt. Do you agree with me? I do. I didn't like it. I didn't like what he did, but I don't like that they suspended him for two days. Goldie puts it away, and we head to the fourth. All-inclusive tickets. They're back for this season. On sale now for April games. Enjoy the game in style. All your food and drinks included and a great view of the game. Get yours today. Cardinals.com slash all-inclusive. Well, the Cardinals had multiple stoppages last year with COVID issues. Wound up playing 58 of the 60 games. 53 regular season games across 44 days, 11 doubleheaders, and Mike Schilt got this team into the postseason. I can't even believe going back and thinking about that. I kind of laughed at it, how they're going to do it, but they did it, and it's still incredible. can't understand how they did it. And the Marlins, they were the first team to deal with a, a massive outbreak of COVID. 18 players, two coaches tested positive, opened up their season in Philly. That's inside. And any way you want to look at it, congratulations to both organizations for finding a way into the playoffs. <laughs> the doubleheaders on the left. <laughs> wow. 13 and 9. It's like the old days. Back in the day, didn't they have, uh, was it Sunday off and they played doubleheaders one day a week? Lots. Or Monday off and they played whatever it was, but that was just part of their schedule. Carlson hits it on the ground to second. Birdie is there, and Dylan 0 for 1 with a walk. The Nationals currently dealing with that. They are one of the teams along with the Mets. They were supposed to open up with the Mets, and they were supposed to play tonight against the Atlanta Braves. That was postponed. They hope to play tomorrow and then a doubleheader on Wednesday but they have been hit with COVID. It's weird to me after all this time that we're still fighting this as a group like that you know like they've done so much to prevent it. You can go through all of spring training which you think that's probably as chaotic as anything because guys are living on their own 
and guys are all over the place and having to get food and do the whole thing and people are in the stands and you know there's a lot of people in Florida or Arizona and then all of a sudden the season breaks and bam mm. get a whole bunch of guys get hit just kind of hoping we'd be through all of that big time <clears throat> soon enough two balls one strike on Austin Dean struck out swinging back in the first inning. Cardinals will face a former Redbird tomorrow and he's a good one Sandy Alcantara. I'm talking about with the swing right does I don't think you can take your normal swing against a guy like this that has a short arm good fastball you keep taking that normal swing you're getting beat not too many guys out there can be quick enough to do both and that's why a guy like this is so successful. And that's where the strikeouts come from. Got to shorten up a little bit. You got to get on top a little bit. Once in a while, you have to change your approach. Can't do the same thing against every pitcher. Crowd tonight in Miami is 27% the capacity allowed. And again, we're in our studios here in St. Louis, so Does that's it, a look at the crowd. Does that mean they have more people than normal? I thought you may go there. I'm going <laughs> to leave it alone. Socially distant crowd. Dean hits a high fly ball. Dickerson can't find it. Ooh. Now he does. I would assume it's about that time of night. The roof is open, and you know better than anybody, Jimmy. Those are the tough skies to deal with with those high fly balls. Yeah, what do we got down there? It is about. Well, it's almost eight o'clock, so uh, hopefully it's dark enough. But yeah, there it is right there. That barely twilight. Plus, the problem is you, you take it for granted. And we see that picture again really quick, Tommy, if you're there. The ball comes off the bat. And look at that great background. But all of a sudden, it, you see it. And then so when you're kind of running to where you need to be is when it gets to that light area. So if you take your eye off the ball to take a couple of steps or to run a little bit, when it gets up there and all of a sudden you're like, oh, where'd it go? Because that's natural to see the ball come off the bat. You know where it's going. You kind of put your head down to get comfortable where you're at. Look back up and like, uh-oh. Where'd it go? Rogers starting to settle in. That's six in a row and six strikeouts tonight. Presented by Rawlings, the exclusive fan club for kids 13 and under. And membership includes fleece blanket, wall sign, virtual events with special guests, all for just $33. Join us at cardinals.com slash kids club. Danny, we're in the bottom of the fourth three balls have been played on the ground three well you're going to get that with Daniels you know pitching up forcing fastballs you get those fly balls both teams that's a that's pretty impressive and not really good for the infielders it's when you start to see guys get a little bit on their heels you'll see a ball get through the infield that normally wouldn't get through Got to keep yourself sharp if you're out there on the field right now. But both of these guys. Mike Maddox, the Cardinals pitching coach. I'm sure he's pleased with what he's seen so far from Daniel Ponce de Leon. Three innings. He's hit uh, Marte twice. He's given up just one base hit. A single to right by Miguel Rojas. No walks and he has struck out three. So, so far so good. Right-hander John Curtis is throwing in the Miami bullpen and the first pitch by Daniel swung on and missed like he can throw that ball right there it's like there's a hole in the strike zone for the right handed hitters that ball is really hard to hit when it's on you that quick and it's Adam Duvall at the plate Duvall here then Brian Anderson and Miguel Rojas. And the 0 1 pitch. Out to left, O'Neill. Plenty of room to make the catch and the first out. Sixth ball put in the air for an out. Trying to go back up and in, and that's the problem. That's why it's so tough in this league, and it's why hitters 
cannot give pitchers too much credit because they can't throw it there every time. So you just got to stay with your game. A guy throws a pitch that you believe you can't get to. You can't start looking for it. You just got to stay with your program. Look for a ball out over the plate because they cannot throw the ball in the exact same place three times in a row. It's impossible. I always find it interesting to see what teams get back on deals. And this really is one of the young cornerstone players of the franchise for Miami in Brian Anderson. Stanton they got away from two hundred and eighteen million dollars owed. Ozuna went to St. Louis. They got Sandy Alcantara Magnera Sierra Zach Gallen who was then traded to Arizona and that turned into Jazz Chisholm Yelich Lewis Brenson and Real Muto Sixto Sanchez one of the big names coming back. But those four were in the lineup at once at one time be a scary lineup. And the pitch taken high. So when Derek Jeter bought the team or was at least part of the ownership group that was there Stanton Ozuna Yelich JT Real Muto. As we were talking about earlier that sky can play tricks on you. <laughs> Don't miss those days. <clears throat> you missed the first and the 15th. Yeah sometimes. <laughs> you know what I thought. <laughs> speaking of which you know what I thought was really interesting too. Everyone. Uh, you would see everyone losing the ball in the in the um, in Minnesota in the dome. Yeah in the dome. That's hit into the gap in right center. Carlson won't get there all the way to the wall and Anderson a one out double. I got a little fun fact for you. What do you got a little deception in the dome. So during batting practice the roof was so white that you would see the ball right and everyone thought it was tough to see the ball in there. And, but what happened was when it got dark outside the roof got darker and became the color of the ball. But what happens is you go into the locker room and say well I don't have any problem with this I can see the ball fine. And then it changes. And so when the night interesting and I remember that I'm like yeah. okay I don't have any problems and the first ball went up and I said don't take your eye off it don't take your eye off it. And I almost lost it and I went okay something's wrong here it's, it's different now. But when the when the top got darker it made it almost impossible to see a ball so you couldn't take your eye off it. But false sense of security because three o'clock in the afternoon that inside of that what was that called the Metrodome. Yeah but it was before that I was thinking about this called the Hubert uh, what was it the Humphrey Dome everyone called it but you could see the ball fine in batting practice so I think guys just went in and said oh that's somebody else's problem. 1987 the Cardinals were in the World Series against the Twins and there are some players that believe the big fan that was behind home plate <laughs> would be blowing There's out no doubt when Minnesota was at the plate and then all of a sudden mysteriously Jimmy was turned off when the opposition was at the plate. I don't know if it exactly is blowing out as if it is keeping the humidity out. And so the, so the ball would, just flew. It would regulate temperatures, right? That was what the fan was for. But if the humidity levels down in that stadium, yep. the ball would take off. And if you would turn the fan off, all of the energy from the people, it would get hotter in there. And you could feel it once in a while. It would change in temperatures. I don't know. That fan never really blew, blew like through the wind, but it got windy in there. And that was sure. from all the fans blowing around. But yeah, the ball, the ball flew in there, man. Oh my gosh. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Rojas, single to right. Ground ball, Arenado looks back the runner and a strike to Goldie. Do you remember up in the upper deck when they had Carew and Puckett and those guys in those big, big, like 60 foot tall things? I hit a fly ball there. It was part of like the baggie well, yeah. of the wall. I hit a fly ball there against the left hander and I hit it good. Was it Frank Viola? No, I wasn't that old. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> was a little closer there for a while. Every day, Eddie. Uh, Eddie Guardado. Guardado. And uh, it hit the bottom of the Carew bag and I thought oh my gosh there's no way a ball should go that far like but it's just like the kingdom was kind of straight up and down yeah in the Yankee Stadium in the old Yankee Stadium you hit it in the third deck well sometimes it's just a fly ball sometimes it was a bomb yeah yeah it was uh, it was a lot of fun to hit there Alfaro at the plate and a check swing did not go ball one. Struck out swinging on a fastball back in inning number two.
They say sliders go further. Eddie did, Eddie used to throw a lot of sliders. Oh yeah. He's also a really really good reliever. Boy, he pitches up in the zone and he's got that giddy up. Yeah, that's that spot right there. It looks really good to the eye. It's kind of up eye level. There's just something about there's just that, that magic hole right in that spot, especially with some sneak. You can see right there, it's just almost unhittable. Especially with deception. One ball, one strike. I would love to see him if he had that kind of a change up to throw oh. that exact same pitch but in to the righty off of that fastball. You would have guys falling over and just coming out of their shoes trying to hit that pitch because it would be kind of starting to come down but you can't hold off long enough to see it and so you're swinging right over the top of it all day long. He's got the four seamer. He'll mix in a breaking ball every once in a while but pretty much it's with Daniel it's here it is old fashioned hardball and the one two pitch throwing the right hander John Curtis in the pen for the Miami Marlins. Cardinals picked up if you're just joining us three runs in the first scored on a pass ball then a two out two run double by Molina. The 2 2. Chopped towards short. De Young. Miami is stranded four through four innings. Coming up, top of the lineup Edmund, Goldschmidt, Arenado. All on Valley Sports Midwest is brought to you by Ford, the official car and truck of the Cardinals. And by Jack in the Box. The triple bonus Jack combo is back at Jack in the Box. Try today for just $5.99. John Curtis is the new pitcher in for the Marlins. Four innings for Rogers, three runs, two hits, six strikeouts, four walks, all in the first inning. John Curtis his pitch for the Twins the Angels and Tampa Bay. You think about the Cardinals spending four to six weeks down in Florida played against the Marlins almost every other day and then second series of the season you come right back down here and play them again. And this year with COVID and the fact that you were playing all the teams within you know about a half hour 45 minutes whatever the case may be you're seeing the Marlins constantly. So I wonder how much thought went into for both Don Mattingly mm -hmm. and Mike Schilt. You Using certain get, guys yeah. during spring. I mean, you got to get guys work. You want to get them live action, but sometimes are you better off getting them that work on the backfield so they don't face these teams as much as you would maybe normally see them? And remember, we're going to see Washington in the upcoming homestand. Well, I had a thought with that today, and I actually wanted to talk about it during the pitching, but now you brought it up. I was thinking about this. Get a lot of guys, especially the bullpen guys, through spring training, really don't get a lot of work against major league hitters all the time. And so if you're not sharp, you really don't know that right away, right? But you come to the beginning of the season and you're not sharp, pow, you're going to get hit. Yeah. Because the hitters are ahead of the pitchers anyways, no matter how you look at it, especially the relievers, I believe, don't get enough innings. Um, and I just thought that like OK you can throw that same hanging slider 10 times in spring training and it gets fouled off or popped up and you throw it to the guys in the big leagues especially one through five. It's a different story and that could really change a game sure. so fast and you're like well I just oh I guess I'm not as sharp as I thought. Top of the Cardinal lineup Tommy Edmond walked and scored. And then was robbed by Miguel Rojas and a hard hit ball in inning number two. It's just really hard to duplicate anything. Game speed if you're not in the game. Now if you're a hitter and you feel like you're behind on the slider or, or you're not timed up with the breaking ball. Wow. The 2 2 hit down the right field line fair and gone. 
Home run, Tommy Edmond, his first of 2021. And the Cardinals add to their lead against the Marlins, and it's 4 nothing. A rocket off the bat of Tommy Edmond. This gets out in a hurry. That's what I was talking about with the guys who make the adjustment to cut down in the strike zone a little bit later in the count. That's that breaking ball. You're giving a guy a whole lot of time to make an adjustment and bomb away. It's a good swing right here by Tommy. Don't have to do too much. It's spinning. Got to hit the barrel with the ball. I'll hit the ball with the barrel and you're going to get a that's a big swing right there for him. One ball, one strike on Paul Goldschmidt. Walked and scored, fly to left, 0 for 1 tonight. Just off the plate. It's just a slider right there. Doesn't get down enough. Stays over the plate. Short swing. Ball Man. jumped. A 4 nothing lead that was hanging there too. another slider and you better watch out. Only two holdovers. The opening day roster from the end of 2020 in this bullpen. Blyer and Garcia. Paul Campbell Zach Pop rule five guys broke camp with the Marlins. Signed Anthony Bass to close. And that's hit up the middle and a base hit. So Curtis has come in and allowed a couple of hits. And then back to my point with the breaking ball too for the relievers. As a hitter, let's take another look at this. It's just a good piece of hitting right here. He's kind of called a B hack. He's just trying to defend himself right here. But as a hitter, if you feel like you're not ready for the breaking ball, you can go in the cage and hit 2,000 breaking balls. As a pitcher, you can throw one or two sliders in a game and not be sharp and get a guy out and not think, hey, I need to work on that. And you know what? It's, I would think it's hard to duplicate in the bullpen at 100% because whenever you get into competition as a pitcher, you have the toughest time making the adjustment because if you overdo something on the mound, you lose your grip, you don't throw it correctly, you get ahead of yourself. As a hitter, you take one swing too hard and you're like, okay, calm down. As a pitcher, you're trying to dial it back in and it's just like, wait, I'm trying to max effort some sliders here to get me out of this inning and I haven't had to really do that yet this year. What about facing your own teammates too? I hated that. Backfields, inner yeah, squad. I, I hate it as a hitter. I, don't, I mean, I think the pitchers have an advantage there, but I also still believe in the back of their mind, don't want to hit a guy. Um, Absolutely. You know, the adrenaline is not there. I've talked to so many guys, and the first thing they say is exactly what you said from the pitching perspective. I don't want to hit my teammate and it's I certainly worst. don't want to hit Nolan Arenado on the, the hand worst. or Goldschmidt. And you know what? Even in spring training when you have pitchers practice and hitters practice, it's pitchers practice and they tell you that. And they'll try to match up guys that are safe with your stars. And the thing for me is I'm just like, I'm good. I'm just going to stand <laughs> there and like, tell me if it's coming inside. I'm going to stand in the back of the box. I'm going to see some pitches. I don't need that right now. I need to just get some swings in, get my body in shape. I don't need a fastball in the hands right now. And then you have Albert who's blasting homers. <laughs> like, I'm like, wait, what are you doing? Three and one on Arenado. He didn't see that ball at all right there. He might have been looking for a slider. That's not good. Look at the reaction, how slow he is right there. Whew. Well, you're right. He was late, didn't he, on that reaction? He's thinking outside, but I don't think he saw it. Whether you're looking slider or not, that's scary. And the 3-1. I was going to say, he won't make that mistake again. That's a perfect example right there why you don't look slider and adjust the fastball. There's no way you can do it. 
You look slight, you look fastball, and you can slow your body down. You can't speed up in that kind of scenario right there. You get killed. What's he come with here on three and two? Hopefully a fastball for a homer. I'm saying something's going to get hit hard. <laughs> well, he's thrown what? Two sliders, and one of them ended up in the seats, and exactly. the other one almost broke a seat down the other end. That's why I'm thinking. Maybe that's why Nolan fastball. was thinking slider right there. Runner goes and it's pulled foul. Yeah, I think it's just spinning up there to hit too. If he throws another one of those and it stays right there, I, he, I think he's going to kill it. Can't imagine him throwing another slider right here. Nope, fastball away. 3 2 to Nolan Arenado. Runner goes and he popped it up. Who wants it? Alfaro. And the first out here in the Cardinals' half of the fifth. Brings in Paul DeYoung, walked back in the first. That would load up the bases. And then with one out O'Neill struck out and Molina struck with a double off the wall in center that scored two. The young struck out on a fastball back in the third. Well for Trevor Rod uh, Rogers take away the first inning wasn't too bad. We saw why he's dominant yeah. why he had so many strikeouts. That control is the only thing that's going to hurt him. Good good stuff. I think he's dominant going to be dominant against right handers especially because he cross firing a little bit and when you just start to speed up he saw that slider they threw down and into Molina that's those balls are unhittable if you can keep it there just can't get behind in the count now time is called no balls one strike on the Cardinals shortstop makes it seem pretty easy doesn't it from your perspective 96 cross wow. firing four seamer and a slider down and in you got it all day long no thanks oh one pitch Mentioned this before, worth mentioning again, but on the left sleeve of the Cardinals jersey all season long will be the number 45 and the Bob Gibson patch. You know, some fans have said, where's number 20? Cardinals did have the 20 patch for Lou Brock last year, and Bob left us on the final day of the Cardinal season last year. Been a tough year for St. Louis sports. The 1 1. Chopped foul. And I'm sure on Thursday we will remember Bob Gibson and Lou and the great Hall of Famers. There will be some of the Red Jackets in town and some of that normal celebration that we have to a baseball season in the best baseball city in America. Still think we should fill up the stands for that one day. It'd be awesome. Here's a one two pitch to Paul DeYoung with a runner at first base. His time is called. I'll tell you what, and I know that's just talking crazy, but think about this after what we've gone through, how crazy that place would be Thursday with 45,000 people in there. I had people that were in Cincinnati tell me they felt like it was a playoff atmosphere with 14,000 people there. Oh, man. They were saying, Jimmy, just the fact that you had fans, there was reaction to plays, there was a reaction like that on a hanging slider. <laughs> you know, I, just the cardboard cutouts, they served a purpose. <laughs> Piping in the crowd, it served a purpose, but there's nothing like fans in the stands. The cardboard cutouts were good for a laugh, but these guys need a little bit of cheering. And the check on the runner at first Paul Goldschmidt. And that's swung on and missed by DeYoung.
Good old hardball right here, huh? Mm hmm. It's a good four seam fastball. Early on in this season, DeYoung is getting a lot of that. Cincinnati challenged him with fastballs. Yeah, and I'm noticing a little bit with him too. And I talked to him the other day, and when he struggles a little bit, he starts to try to find right field a little bit more. Well, he'll start to like stay inside the ball and really make sure he's staying on on top of the ball and, and let the ball travel and get it deep. The thing I've noticed with some guys that do that, they try to manipulate the ball to the other way. And what that means is they'll open up their hips to try to drag their hands to push the ball the other way. And what happens with that, the ball gets on you so fast you're, you're and you're taking, that, everything. you're taking that one tick too long to get there because your hips, when your hips start to open, your hands start to drop and you're not attacking the baseball. You're kind of waiting to swing at it. And then as the bat is dropping and your hips are moving, that ball's getting on you in a hurry. Yeah. And then you're just a tad bit late. It's a good explanation of it right there. It is weird, you know, that that old saying like you have a that your body has, you know, one thing is does this and the other. It's like the equal and opposite reaction when your lower body does things. It does weird things to your hands. And if you if you open up with that hip, if you step on the outside of your foot, it causes everything to turn a little early. And all it does is it drops that elbow and then the bat drops and everything starts to get underneath you. And if you stay firm and that hand stays up, then you kind of throwing a punch. But imagine throwing a punch with your hips ducking underneath it. You're just getting long and slower. The strikeout of O'Neill. And the home run hit by Tommy Edmond, his first of the year. And the Cardinals lead it midway through five. And the Cards lead it four to nothing in Florida. The Cardinals dropped two of three in Cincinnati. But Paul DeYoung told me that series was a bonding experience. He said any time the bench is clear, as it did in game two, that can bring a team closer together. Paul says he was really impressed with how quickly Nolan Arenado got into the mix. He told me he was right on it. Right there with Yada, you could see the fire. Paul said he wasn't surprised. Paul said, I've seen the clip of him charging the mound against San Diego and running around after a walk-off with blood running down his face and a crazy look in his eye. Danny, Paul said he loves the fire that Nolan brings. He's a real one. <laughs> ah, okay. I love he says the fire in his eyes. He does have a fire in his eyes when he's chasing people around. Castiano said that Yachty, he's, uh, he's a real one. He's a real one. That cat. That cat is a real one. Not what I expected out of the uh, press conference from him. That yeah, lingo. That, that caught me a little bit. <laughs> I wish they would have let it play a little bit longer so it didn't look so awkward. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. This is John Birdie. And there's a strike by Daniel Ponce de Leon. And the 3 1, 4 0 our score. Now 3 2. Birdie struck out on a fastball back in inning number two. Daniels struck out three tonight. He's hit two. That was Marte twice, and he's allowed two base hits. Trying to come back in this plate appearance. And a foul ball. Nero Sierra is on deck. Former Cardinal. And he walked him. So a leadoff walk and now Sierra. And he'll put pressure on the defense with his speed. Kickoff Cardinals opening weekend. Take home a mystery Cardinals Hall of Fame parade bobblehead. It's courtesy of Ford. 10,000 fans entering with a ticket. April 10th and 11th surprised with a bobblehead featuring Stan the Man or Jack Buck or Tony La Russa. Tickets at Cardinals.com slash promotions. That's the first walk issued by Daniel Ponce de Leon. Sierra the bunt. 
Oh, Renato, not in time. So the base hit for Sierra, who can absolutely fly. Yeah, and that's something that you love what Arenado does right here. The thing he forgets about, well, I think the second baseman comes across the bag too much, and he's kind of in the wrong spot. But the one thing that we're missing here is the fact that the runner is flying. And he's got a chance right there, but there's no one there. Well, the other part of this, I like too, the aggressiveness. is the shift. Yeah. Well. You know, they, they, you could see that's... Watch going towards second. That's the young, and then he peels off. Well, it's the second. It's it's the play that they're running, where the third baseman and the first baseman were supposed to break. You're trying to get just the out at first base, but the ball was hit so hard. Being a good third baseman, he's like, well, heck, I can get the runner. But really, the the shortstop's job is to kind of go towards the bag, but then he's got to worry about third base. And second baseman's got first base by himself, so there's a hole somewhere. It just so happens that ball's bunted too hard, and then paulie has got to make a decision, and we're going to get this guy, or am I going to have to go worry about third base because they're going to keep running? So that's, a, that's just one of those plays that's just you're in no man's land if it's hit that hard. Dickerson now at the plate, top of the lineup. When I watched, and I watch a lot of baseball, and when I watch Nolan play in Colorado, he is going to take a ton of chances on those type of plays. And I don't know if you noticed in the series against the Reds. Yep. Same thing. Can't remember who was on the mound, but you could see he almost was distracted by that. He is going to, more times than not, get that lead man and take more chances than any other third baseman in the league. And so the rest of his teammates are going to have to get used to that, too. Yeah, and I, and I truly believe, I think, if, uh, if you look back at that, if Paul stays at second base, he's throwing that ball. That's on Arenado, and he's probably in that situation going to get him out. The other day, it was just a tad bit late. That's fine. He's going to, you know, be aware of that more often. But like you said, everybody get a get used to this. It's it's heads up time. Absolutely. There's every now and then, though, when you're in spring training and you're going through these scenarios, right? And they say, well, what if this happens? And everyone looks at each other like, then we're in trouble because what if this happens doesn't happen very often because it is what if that perfect scenario is there where we're running this coverage second baseman's breaking no matter what shortstop's kind of in a read mode and then the ball all of a sudden is bunted so hard we're now Nolan's taking a shot at second and the shortstop's thinking oh man he, we're not going to get this guy so I'm just going to cover third well the guy fielding the ball is going I got this guy second yeah so two guys are thinking two different things and you're in no man's land Jordan Hicks is throwing for the Cardinals in their bullpen. But I'll go back to the point, though, of if you're the teammate of Nolan Arenado, he's got eight gold gloves. Clearly, he's an incredible defender. But he is going to take a ton of chances that maybe you haven't been used to over the last handful of years. Yeah, and it's uh, if you're the first baseman on Scott Rowland's team, yeah. you better get to first and turn around and look for the ball because he's going to throw it no matter what. And yep. If you're not there... That's on you. That's on you. And if you don't turn around fast enough, you're going to have a bruise. I always thought I was pretty comfortable over there until he told me that one day. And I thought, wait, you don't watch me run over there? He's like, no, I'm throwing it because Albert's late and I can't wait. And I'm like, oh, OK, so I better get there and turn around. <laughs> <laughs> my right 50 games at first base. I it changed my thought process in a hurry. Tell you what, first base is pretty easy to play most of the time. But every now and then when you're standing out there and you're off the bag a little bit and that ball's hit hard to mostly third and second, there's a slight panic when you're running to the bag if you're going to get there in time to be able to turn around, pick up the ball, stay balanced, stretch, and, oh, by the way, who's running? It comes quick. And there's that little spot of, oh, I better get over there. And a guy's got a cannon like Arenado. And that's probably, rolling. <laughs> that's probably why a lot of times when you see that low camera that sees the hitter in the first baseman and they don't get off the bag very far because they don't want to get too far away to have to run back and worry about sure. that stuff. So two and two the count here on Dickerson struck out back in the first fly to left the first two have reached with a walk and a bunt base hit in this inning. Ponce de Leon is allowed three hits. And 
Yachty wants to talk it over here. And while we have a moment, quick word from Great Southern Bank. What's more convenient than over 100 helpful locations? How about one you can take with you? Wherever life's path leads you, we're just a tap away with Great Southern Mobile Banking. It might not seem like it right here in the fifth inning, but this is a big at bat. Four to nothing, fifth inning, nobody out. This is where you struggle in the past with what pitched a good game, what happened, had that one bad inning, how did it happen? A walk, a base hit, an error, whatever whatever it is, and then a little bit of the falling apart, not getting the next guy, and all of a sudden you look at a game now that's four to two, four to three. So Goldie steps on the bag, runners at second and third. Starling Marte. Marlins with a right hander throwing in their bullpen. Jordan Hicks. This is why you see Jordan Hicks up right now, too. Because if I'm not mistaken, was it yesterday that the Reds scored like fifth, sixth, and seventh? Fifth yeah. inning. Fifth, three innings, six, two, uh, six innings, and then another two. And yet you were looking at a basically a 1 1 game until that happened with the starter cruising. So you can get out of control in a hurry. And there's always that one inning during the middle of the game where you got to stop it. Yeah, sometimes the game and a closer can win your game in the fifth. Now, Jordan Hicks, they're going to ease him back after Tommy John, so he's not your typical closer yet. That may change as the season goes forward, but key spot is right here. Well, Marte is one of the hottest players in their lineup, probably the hottest. Tell you what, if you follow Jordan Hicks on social media, I've got my confidence in him. He's thrown 102 last October on the side, so oh, I saw he's it. raring to go. <laughs> it's probably he drooling might be the, down there trying the to get in the game. <laughs> hey, he might be the strongest guy on the team. He might be. That man is put together. I like what I saw out of him the other day in the outfield too. Sticking up for his teammates. He was none too pleased. Here's an 0 2 pitch. One ball and two strikes. Daniel kind of shaking that right arm, that right hand. Starting to maybe get a little tight. Getting into that 84, 85 pitch range, which I don't think you really got anywhere near that or past that in spring training. It's a big gap in left center in the outfield. And the one two pitch Ponce de Leon to Marte with two runners on. He's hit him twice on balls just well, like if that. you notice he doesn't really move. He just turns. And if you could take a look at that right there watch the elbow. The elbow is going towards the plate right there a little bit. He's not really trying to get out of the way. He's not trying to hit him. And he's not trying to get out of the way a whole lot. This guy is a quality player. And he's not backing down. Runners at second and third. Two balls, two strikes. The next two, Marte. Full count. He's also hitting 500. The 14 at bat, so. He's doing a little bit of damage already. Been on base in nine of his last 12 plate appearances. And the 3 2 pitch to Marte. High fly ball into center, backing up Dylan Carlson. He'll make the catch on the track. Both runners tag up. One will score, and the Marlins get on the board. It's now 4 1. Got to believe this might be it for Ponce, too. But we'll see if he gives him a chance to get out of this inning and earn a win. Good for him. If this, I like it. If, if, if this is a 4 to 2 game, with him hitting and the guy on third, Jordan Hicks in this game? Probably. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Now he can't tie this game up, so you're going to go ahead and let him get a chance. To so runner at out. third and two outs. Aguilar is fly to center and popped out to first. He easily could make this a one run lead with his power. Ah, that's the pitch you got to have right there. Ball is outside the zone, but it's been called a strike tonight. Right on the edge. Even Yachty gave it a little look behind home plate. And the 1 0 pitch by Ponce de Leon. I got to believe that you can tie him up right here, and I think this would be a good spot for a fastball on that little blind spot. You throw too many fastballs out over the plate, and he starts to lean, and if you miss just a little bit, that ball comes back over the plate. He's got too much power to let him get his hands extended. That's how he got him out on the previous. And I don't mind. At bat. Yeah, I don't mind, you know, really getting inside either. Hits it out to left, and just Ooh. foul. So one and two the count. Sierra racing down that third base line trying to do disrupt Daniel Ponce de Leon remember when we saw Sierra break through at the Cardinals it was an unbelievable series he put together against the Marlins. The 2 2 Aguilar the gap out to right and the catch made Austin Dean is there got away with that one. Marlins get on the board. We move to the sixth, then it's 4 1. Is John Gant. He'll be the starter tomorrow in game five of this young season and his 2021 debut. He'll get Sandy Alcantara in game two of this series. We're in Valley Sports Midwest and we'll come your way tomorrow at five or Budweiser. What's on tap? So Jordan Holloway is into the ball game. Our Chevy call to the pen. And his stay on the big league roster may be very short and temporary. So Garrett Cooper of the Marlins is on the COVID-19 IL. Now the way that that would work it would be a very brief time on the IL for Garrett Cooper. He's dealing with some symptoms that followed his vaccination. Holloway had a big league debut last year got a an out. But outside of that he had not pitched above high A. He'll get Molina Carlson and Dean. And the 2 0 to Yadier Molina is grounded to short. Bobbled just a bit, but with time, and then picked by Aguilar. I always just think how many hits he would have if he was oh. two steps faster. Because how many balls he puts into play. Nice pick right there. Ten relievers by the way the Marlins going into the series that'll probably change tomorrow but ten available kind tonight st stuck with your position players tonight aren't you yeah not a whole lot of pinch hitting 
So on their bench they've got Sierra who's just been used. Jazz Chisholm. Backup catchers Chad Wallach and Lewis Brenson. Carlson. With a fly ball into right. Duvall is there makes the catch two away. The 2021 Cardinals Hall of Fame ballot presented by Edward Jones live now through the 17th of April. Cast a vote at cardinals.com slash HOF. My understanding the uh, red jackets will be out on opening day is that correct. I believe so. And I believe there will be a few guys there and they are trying to put something together at least minimal to get some of the guys out there somewhere. Good. Two away. Here's Austin Dean and a start tonight. Uh, struck out swinging in the first and fly to left. Curtis pitched the fifth gave up two hits a run struck out two. Oh hum no big deal. Holloway a one two three. This Cabaretti telecast presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and not to be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. It's our Chevy call to the pen Jordan Hicks is in. And the Cardinals got five innings from Daniel Ponce de Leon one run on three hits struck out three walked one and hit two kind of exactly what they needed. Yes. It's a pretty good weapon to have coming into a three run lead in the sixth inning. Jordan Hicks. And the first pitch is strike. I wonder if Yachty went in and got a bigger thumb guard. Yachty told me he would go through a ton of mitts during a season. You know, when the Cardinals first called up Trevor Rosenthal, and then Carlos Martinez was throwing yep. high 90s. I just want to tell you what, though, if you got bad hands as a catcher, you're getting eaten up against guys like that, especially against this guy with the movement. Fly ball into right. Coming in Austin Dean and there's one away. The battle would be Brian Anderson he's one for two with the double. Noticed it in spring training along with Hicks. And Alex Reyes it really shortened up how they take back the baseball. It's a more compact delivery it looks like to the plate. Yeah I'm wondering if he went to one of those places that kind of sinks your body up a little bit. So usually guys with elbow trouble I mean they lead with the elbow a little bit. So I'm wondering if he tried to change that. You know by not being so long with the arms. I, I didn't think his mechanics were that bad. I, I don't know if it's just the power of some guys that body can't hold it or you do lead with your elbow. It kind of surprised me a little bit, but it makes a lot of sense. And the 0 1. They're starting to put all those um, places out there that really read your body and your mechanics. And I've actually seen um, there's a new MRI or something out that will actually tell you when your muscles are really fatigued in the body. And it'll almost prevent your injury because instead of waiting till you could get hurt. That's interesting. It'll zap an area that's inflamed or swollen or something's different. And they say hey this area is getting fatigued even when you're not on the mound. You need to watch out. There's a lot of things I think in the next few years that are going to do to really really prevent injuries. And you know you've seen those biomechanics where it's basically like a stick figure. And your body's in a computer and you're throwing and they can tell when your foot's hitting the ground just a slight bit too early it means your elbows behind your arm a little bit or vice versa and where the stress is going. Well you hear about pitchers all the time going to driveline to help with mechanics. God. Hmm. 
been a pretty good zone tonight and for the better part of this ball game that has been a strike. Yeah, he's done a nice job though behind the plate. Yep. Quinn Wolcott it's been very good. One and two the count. That backs up for a ball inside and I'm wondering what you think about this. If you're an umpire in the situation like this. Are you do you think you'd be a better umpire if you knew it was coming. Because do you think they're going to anticipate a little bit especially the guy throwing 100 miles an hour and he's thinking OK here comes another fastball he's going to throw this middle in if it gets away from him, or do you think you can actually just sit there and react because I'll tell you what it's scary oh. when the ball is coming at you I, I'm throwing batting practice now to my son behind the net and he's starting to hit the ball harder and harder and I can't not flinch yet. It's look, hard. Well look at where he's situated. You, he's wide that, open. They call it the slot which is between the batter and the catcher. Yeah no thank you in that slot either by the way. It's foul ball territory yeah. right in the chest. That's right. So he is exposed. His whole body is exposed. You can see they do flinch but I'm just wondering if you were a catcher and you could tell the umpire with a touch or a flicker of your hand if it would make them a little bit better we see right there the blink I mean but it's, it's impossible not to flinch. We've always been curious about that. These guys are so good though that I, I my guess is they're accustomed to it and it's every single night they're going to see it. I, I understand what you're saying and, and it's kind of like for me um, hitting against our pitching staff and they'll tell you what's coming. And so when you don't know what's coming that fastball away might be on the edge but if you flinch a little bit you don't know if it's on the plate or not. But if you knew a fastball away was coming or if you knew a slider was coming you're able to relax your eyes and see the ball all the way back. Now if you think fastballs coming and a breaking ball comes. You're done. Yeah you little oh, head, yeah little head bob and <laughs> see ya. Jordan Hicks hit 100 on that strikeout of Anderson. And so far this season five up and five down. Here's Miguel Rojas who is one for two. Well I look at the umpire's left hand and how he's getting situated and that is exposed. He's not putting that behind his back. And that's a foul tip away from some danger on his hand his wrist to forearm. The bicep area that is an exposed area a lot of times for an umpire. I mean look at that Jimmy. There's a lot of exposure right there. Yep. And it's not like he's a big guy back there. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. 4 1 our score here in the bottom of the sixth. Hicks in relief of Daniel Ponce de Leon who went five innings gave up a run on three hits. Struck out three walked one and hit two. Both times it was Starling Marte. Now look at him. I just think it's uh, I remember back in the day when the umpires had that big old chest protector that they They'd stand have to hold there it. your little face is sticking underneath and that was all that was exposed. I'll stay in there all day long with that. Now it's like you're as might as well be you're worse off than the catcher. And a high fly ball out to left. O'Neill, the catch. One, two, three, go the Marlins. Nice to have that man back. On Valley Sports Midwest is brought to you by BJC, the world's best medicine made better. And by Budweiser, this Bud's for you. It's a 4 1 Cardinal lead. Matt Carpenter will be the pinch hitter. And the Gateway Honda dealers will donate $1,000 to the Make a Wish Foundation if a Cardinal hits a home run this inning. Carpenter this season, 0 for 2 of the walk. And the second inning for Holloway. And that's ball one.
been thinking a lot about Matt and how he stays engaged trying to stay sharp first time in his career at this level to be relegated to pinch hitting not an oh. easy thing to do. <laughs> how far did that one go. Yeah I don't know how you do it to be honest with you if you've never done it before. There's only a few ways you can do it and you're hoping that your managers on board with you and he'll give you some time to get loose. Otherwise you're in there hitting and trying to get loose the whole game because you're so used to having preparation for hours before the game to getting ready. And the 2 0 pitch 3 and 0. Wow. Holloway came in in the sixth inning. Got a ground ball off the bat of Molina as you look at that shift. Carlson flied to right and a strikeout. That, that is a shift. Look at that shift. <laughs> Three and two. Full count on Carpenter, Edmund to follow, and then Goldschmidt. Another breaking ball right here. <clears throat> Hit out to left, racing over and in foul territory, Dickerson. And a ball that probably should have been caught. Looked like he gave up on it. Maybe thought he was closer to the wall than he really was. <laughs> oh, I, I thought he wasn't going to get anywhere near it. And then it almost looked like it hit him in the foot. Wow. That was odd. So you know what happens, Jimmy? More times than I not. I hope so. Because you know what? There's one guy on this field that needs it. Yep. And it'll be this guy right here. Look at the shift now. Might as well. Would that have bothered you as a hitter? No. But I'll tell you what. If there was a guy I had trouble with, but you could, some of those guys you can see the ball and you just don't get hits against, I wouldn't be, I mean, all you got to do is bunt it. I don't care if there's two strikes or not. All you have to do is hit it in play. You it's know, sometimes hit. you foul balls off because you're trying to be too perfect. But holy cow, I wouldn't, might, might not do it here, but. Mm. It's a nasty pitch three and two right there. That's just not fair. A four to one game. You're thinking fastball. You don't play every day. Statcast powered by Google Cloud and the home run hit back in the fifth inning by Tommy Edmond. It's a second strikeout for Holloway. Says that's a home run in 28 out of 30 ballparks. I'm wondering the two that it's not. What do you think? I think they should say. If you're going to say that, you got to tell us. Too Let's many take, stats. Take a guess. Colorado, because of the high wall, maybe? That's I was thinking that. I was thinking high walls. Distance seemed to be just fine. That was a missile. Um, I don't know. St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> And a strike at the knees. Ooh, that's a good call, Detroit. Yeah, Brian. That would make nice some call, sense. Brian. Brian Shapiro. What was the distance? Oh, they didn't have the distance. Just had the stat cast velocity. Oh, this is going to be a game we're going to have to master all year long, Danny. Got him to reach for it, and a flip to Holloway. Five up, five down. It's in the upper deck in New York. <laughs> Giovanni Gallegos throwing in the pen. I could see where this game goes to Gallegos in the seventh if all goes to plan and then eight and nine to Alex Reyes. Wouldn't surprise me. They don't have a lot of pinch hitting ability today. And a strike to Paul Goldschmidt. Mm. 
Ooh. Yeah, that uh, minimum three batters thing kind of takes a toll on that, huh? Yep. Not bringing in a lefty. I don't like that. I, don't I, like I it saw either. it last year and I saw it. That's enough. There's an 0 2. Fastball got him. No argument from Goldie. Three strikeouts for Holloway. Six up, six down, and it's time to stretch. Seventh in Florida. Mike Maddox probably happy about Jordan Hicks, who threw a scoreless inning tonight. Hicks made his return from Tommy John surgery in game two against Cincinnati with a scoreless inning. Hicks said after that game, just getting out there and competing was the main thing. That's all I thought about while coming back. He was also fired up during the whole Castellanos thing, and I mean really fired up. Hicks wouldn't say what got him upset. He just said, I just wanted to be out there for my teammates. But Danny, it's really nice to have Jordan Hicks back. And he looks good, Jimmy. Thank you. It's Giovanni Gallegos now into the ball game. Seven, eight, and nine for Miami here in the bottom of the seventh. Four one our score. Our Chevy call to the pen. Danny, I got a text message from Ian Nelson. He called Chicago. Would be maybe the other ballpark that that ball didn't get out. Well, you're right on one, Coors, and the other is Wrigley. So those Wrigley. are the two. Nice call, Ian. Our good buddy Mike Whitty is helping us out as oh, well. Oh, I like that. See, I knew you had some little side thing going on. Oh, yeah. This is Alfaro, Birdie, and then a pinch hitter for Holloway. Third pitcher used by the Cardinals is Giovanni Gallegos. Daniel Ponce de Leon, five innings, one run, three hits. Jordan Hicks, the scoreless sixth inning. And now Gallegos. One ball and one strike. Another, Alfaro tonight is struck out and grounded out. Another guy with a sneaky fastball. Guys look up on the board and see it's 91 92 and figure out why is everyone late. Then he has that breaking pitch slider curve slurve whatever you want to call it but it's nasty. Broken bad and that exploded back in in the hands That's busted what we're his talking bat. about right there. Now you get that uh, official sticker put on that authenticated Jimmy and <laughs> you too can have a no thanks Jorge Alfaro bat you could take this home and show it to your mom. <laughs> that is one you want to just go and hide you don't want anyone to see that bat. Ever. <laughs> the one two in the dirt two and two. John Gant Sandy Alcantara tomorrow Jack Flaherty and Pablo Lopez in game three. And then it's the return of Colton Wong in the home opener. As Milwaukee will have their first visit to Bush Stadium Thursday afternoon and we'll have it for you the home opener looking forward to that. Corbin Burns will go for the Brewers. Alfaro hits it out to right tailing back into the glove of Austin Dean for the out. Right handed batter that's going to tail back to your right fielder. Yep and that's exactly where you want it to be is on the right side of your body so it stays in front of you. Sometimes that ball sneaks down the line and you're running after it saying why why can't I catch up to this ball. Because it's just slicing away from you the whole time. Not fun. I don't like right and left field after playing center field for 16 years. You're just good with center. Yeah I'm good. And I kind of came up playing the corners and it just seemed a lot easier when I was younger. <laughs> Who was in center when you came up? When I was in Anaheim, Chad Curtis had beaten me by a year or two, a year and a half, and he was a center fielder. And there were some good outfielders you were with. We had uh, Chad came, uh, Tim Salmon came up one year. Oh, Chad Tim Curtis Salmon. came up, then Salmon, then me, then Anderson, Garrett Anderson. And then I think um, 
is either Troy Gloss or then Darren Erstad or one or the other. Those guys, get, like five years in a row, we had a guy come up and That's some pretty really good players, take over. Man. Yeah, good young group. 0 oh 2 the count on John Birdie. Problem that happened was we had too many young guys. You only have three outfielders spots and four outfielders basically. They put Darren at first and he hurt his arm a little bit from changing his throwing angle and he had a little bit of trouble for a while and that's when um, I got traded and then he could go back to the outfield and his arm got a little bit better but I think it took him a while to get his throwing motion back. Nebraska Cornhusker. I believe he is the head coach there right now too. Outside corner doesn't get the call on. Two and two. When the pitcher walks off the mound the catcher starts to throw the ball away around and the batter starts to walk back to the dugout. Do you think you missed it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> And the 2 2. That time he got him. And then you get one to the down by the knees, which you know he doesn't want. But if you're Gallegos, you got to go back there, don't you? You have to go back there. And that's a strike, but that is not a hitter's strike. Take the pitch before. First strikeout for Giovanni Gallegos. Birdie thought it was probably low and outside after the previous call. And Lewis Brenson will be the batter coming off the bench tonight for Don Mattingly. Just off the plate and ball one. You know it's funny it's. I mean it's not all the same but that right hander throwing that breaking ball kind of coming across the plate. And finishing outside a little bit the left hander throws the breaking ball and it goes around the plate and comes never comes back and get the strike so you could see why sometimes the right handers will complain from that. And the fly ball hit to the former Marlin Dean and right he's been busy puts it away in one two three go to the Marlins. We head to the eighth Nolan Arenado coming up. 14th, the Cardinals host Washington and take home an adult puffy vest courtesy of Bear. And add this to your Cardinals fashion, a must have promo. Get your tickets today. Cardinals.com slash promotions. And the new pitcher for Miami is Adam Simber. Acquired from the Cleveland Indians. He's appeared in four games against the Cardinals and he's 2 and 0. Oh. A lot of sliders. You're going to see those about 50% of the time. Right hander has got to really work hard to stay through the ball, let the ball get a little deep. You've got to pick your side of the plate. And I wouldn't pick the inside, I would pick out over the plate, try to drive the ball to center field. Simber is the fourth pitcher used. And here is Arenado. Arenado, DeYoung, O'Neill, Chevy call to the pen, Adam Simber. 4 1 our score. The 1 0 pitch to Arenado. Fastball in there for a strike. Nolan with a base hit to left field. He's flied to center and popped out. 375 the average on this young season. Catches the inside corner. That is a tough pitch for a right handed oh, batter. That's what I'm talking about. That ball's coming around the plate. That ball's on the plate, but it's still coming at you a little bit and then breaking back. And it is hard to pull the trigger because you have to be ready to go instantly to pull that ball. It's two never, and two. Never fun to face these guys. I don't care how hard they throw. 
how soft they throw. If you know they're going to throw sliders every time, it's just not fun. It's just really hard to pick up the release point. They used to tell you to look at his shoes instead of like following his head or his glove for a normal guy. Look at his shoe tops. Well, then how do you follow uh, the baseball? Well, you're looking at the shoe tops to get your eyes down there. And then you move over when the ball's coming through, as opposed to you're looking on a normal guy at his head, his hat, his glove, up in the upper region. And then when the arm comes around, you go back to over there. So you're trying to not, you have to do something different. You can't shift your eyes fast enough to get the submarine guy. I don't care what you do, it's hard to pick up. Even on the other side, lefty righty, it's still not a lot of fun. Three two again. And a base hit for Nolan Arnato. Relief pitching it set down nine Cardinals in a row until this base hit. It's a slider right there that doesn't get too much movement on it and stays over the plate. This guy just swings, doesn't he? Everything the bat is on hit the ball. hard. Love it. Great player, isn't he? Yeah, and he's a great example for all these young guys. Here's to Young. Now I'm going to watch the hips. You were talking about his hips opening up maybe a little too early with some of these plate appearances. And I thought that early on, um, and we talked about it actually. The ball that that I thought he really opened up was the pitch before two pitches before he hit the first home run. Looked like he was trying to stay inside the ball, but he was moving out of the way to get his hands free. Well this guy I, I'm not going to watch him hit here because like I said this is a tough spot for a right hander especially a guy who's trying to take the ball the other way is it's kind of basically coming from behind you and you really have to stay closed as long as possible it's hard to do. Two and one. My favorite thing about guys like this when people ask for advice I always say don't swing at a ball. Probably end up getting a walk. Rounder foul. Two and two the count. Simber to DeYoung on a 2 2. Got him. Cardinals have struck out 12 times tonight. They have five hits, but they lead it 4 1. The three for Polly. <clears throat> That's three. Oh. In steps Tyler O'Neill. Struck out twice, fly to left. Grounded left side, out there, the turn, and not in time. Boy, does he get down no the line. Getting him right there. I think when they first got up, guys see this bigger guy, muscle, big swing, hit a ground ball, and think, how did he get down there so quick? <laughs> you wouldn't expect it. It's a pretty good turn too. Well, that probably doubles up what 90 percent of everyone in the league. Absolutely. Especially the right handed hitters. And they were playing off the line too and in. That's a new stat there you got 90 90 percent of the right handed hitters are out on that ball. Well name the other 10 percent. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Yadier Molina. This be our stat cast. O'Neill running and is he off the bag? He was safe and then off the bag. That he was. Beat it out but came off the bag. Caught stealing.
Valley Sports brings you Cardinal baseball tonight. And the Cardinals with a 4-1 lead. As we play in the home half of the eighth, Daniel Ponce de Leon went five. Yadier Molina double that scored two early on. Rogers, the starter for the Marlins, only four innings. And Starling Marte as the sack fly RBI. Second inning of work for Giovanni Gallegos. And the top of the lineup, Dickerson, Marte, Aguilar. And the first pitch is strike. Gallegos got a fly out by Alfaro. Strikeout looking at Birdie. Then Brinson, the pinch hitter, flied to right, a 1 2 3 seventh. And here's the 0 1 from Giovanni. Took something off it. Nasty pitch. Nasty changeup. Up and in. So one ball, two strikes. Dickerson has struck out swinging, flied to left and grounded out. Cardinals trying to get at least two innings here from Giovanni Gallegos. And there's that breaking pitch. Take it down and in. Evens it up at two and two. <laughs> Left center and O'Neill is there. Just another good fastball. It's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of fastballs in the zone. A couple guys that are sneaky. Having a good night. Last hit for Miami was a bunt from Sierra back in the fifth. Total of three hits tonight. Cardinals with a total of five. But the walks really hurt early on by Trevor Rogers. Walked three in that first inning, actually four, and three came around to score. You know, the last time the Cardinals were in Miami, the St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup. Hmm. And flying to New York that night. That's right. So I was waiting in New York for you. Jesus Aguilar. Just a bit has changed since that last time we were in Miami. <laughs> you mean all of life? Yeah. Aguilar is flied to center, flied to right, and popped out. And the first pitch taken for a ball. Cardinals in the ninth inning will have Molina, Carlson, and Dean. Marlins had a base hit by Rojas in the second inning, a double in the fourth, and the bunt base hit by Magnera Sierra. One ball, one strike, and that has been it. The pitching has been spectacular tonight. Five innings from Daniel Ponce de Leon, scoreless sixth inning by Jordan Hicks, and Gallegos has enjoyed five up, five down. Mixed in there with a strikeout. I think it has anything to do with what you said. There's only been one walk. Big a lot to do it. with it. Isn't it amazing, though? You walk people, they come around to score, and that's what happened in that fifth inning with Daniel Ponce de Leon, the only run he gave up. So five walks in this game, and four of them have scored. Right. How does that work every single time. 
Alex Ray is throwing in the Cardinals bullpen. The one two pitch lined into right for a base hit. Keep throwing that guy out over the plate and he just keeps hitting it in the right center. I think Aguilar had 35 or 38 home runs one year when he got a chance to play almost every day. Here's Duvall, fly to center, fly to left, fly to right. Ball one. It's Ross Detweiler who pitched at Missouri State. Standing on the mound for the Marlins. Here's a 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike. It's a good slider right there. Hitters up 1 0. Definitely think you're going to get a fastball. You're going to cheat a little bit because he's sneaky. Good pitch. Good job by Yachty recognizing that too. Went back to it. All right, so now you got him one and two back to back. Curve slider, whatever he wants to call it. Do you try to bust him in? Do you? What I think do you think? You just you try to go up, and I th I think you try to go up in the zone. I don't think you try to go up out of the zone to get him to chase. I want you. I want you to throw a strike, pretty much a strike, the best you can. I don't want. I don't want to see another slider. Uh, he's either going to take it, or he's going to hammer it. Just what you said. Wanted it up, got it there. Daniel Ponce de Leon, he loves it. He's got a chance for a win tonight. It's 4 1 as we head to the ninth. Our Budweiser player of the game and tonight's starter. And that is Daniel Ponce de Leon. Five innings, three hits. Jimmy, I don't think he threw a curveball. <laughs> I think he threw two sliders. And one got hit and one got fouled back. And I think he said, I'm being oh, serious. That's not sharp tonight. I'm not throwing that again. Yeah. Do a couple of change ups. Be curious to hear his comments after the game how often he did go back to that curveball, if at all. I don't remember a time, though, that he did. Well, we'll have to let Al and Erica break that down after the game. Ross Detweiler, the lefty, originally drafted by the Nationals. It was a first round pick all the way back in 2007 and drafted in 07 then made his major league debut in the same year. He huh. is pitched with Texas the Braves Indians A's Mariners and White Sox. Grew up in Wentzville Missouri graduated from Holt High School. And also pitched at Missouri State. As Yachty flips the bat on a pop up. Aguilar over and makes the catch. First man retired here in the ninth. And with one out. Alex Reyes grabs his glove and starts to throw again. Danny I believe that we got. Uh, 88 fastballs and five off speed pitches today from Ponce. So my eyes were not deceiving me. They were not. A little bit though because we don't know which were the breaking ball and the change ups but there are only five of them. <laughs> wow. Doesn't that tell you something though. I mean move the ball around yes. up and down in and out. But I think it's kind of unfair because I think he has an, another dimension to him. I agree kind of like Gallegos has that little sneaky jump on his ball where his 92 looks like 95 or 96. 
Um, and that makes it tough. That actually makes it tougher than throwing 97 miles an hour. So many times that we watch how a game is called or pitched and they they call it backwards. You know you start out with a slider curveball changeup, not the fastball. Well the one thing I noticed that Ponce does he, he'll use his fastball like off speed. Well he'll throw the first pitch 91 92 and then when he gets ahead of you he'll give you 94. Yeah. 95 sometimes. And it just he's got confidence in it. And like I said he's got that swing and miss factor which is huge. Carlson 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Austin Dean on deck. And a swing and a miss. Unlucky number 13. 13 strikeouts in the Cardinal lineup. Yeah, that's just a good fastball away right here. Dylan looked like he pulled off a little bit, thinking about something else. Probably inside, watch his body go towards third. The bat goes towards first, and it is not the way to hit. It makes it really hard that way some days. Ooh. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, Marlins will have Anderson, Rojas, Alfaro do up. And looks like they will face Alex Reyes as Dean looks at a strike. 0 for 3 tonight with two strikeouts. Also, fly to left. I like this guy right here. I like his makeup. He did a nice job in the outfield. I like his at bats, even though he's 0 for 3. He's been patient. <clears throat> I think he faced a tough lefty tonight. Probably a guy you would never see in the minor leagues. That guy in the minor leagues is into the big leagues in a year. Yeah. Sidearm and lefty firing 96. Dean has got some pop too. And he hits it out to left and that ball is foul. Marlins talked about it. That when he was there and he would get a occasional run of games, they said he would be the hottest hitter in the league. Couldn't get the guy out. As streaky as they come. I just like his demeanor at the plate. He doesn't come out of his swing very often. He's not pressing. You know, he's not flailing at pitches. I, I just think he does a nice job and gets more comfortable, especially getting to play a little bit more. I think he's gonna be a good player. I, I just like what I see. I like how comfortable he looks at the plate. I like the way he runs around the outfield. The one two. I think the one thing that I see that he, that he could improve on would be just the length of time his bat is through the zone. More like a little more extension out front. But there's a reason he's in the big league so. One ball and two strikes Austin Dean. Two and two. Infield is basically straight up for Dean. Marte the center fielder. Shading a bit to right center. Alex Reyes continues to throw in the Cardinal bullpen. Mm. Got him. Called third strike, and that sends us to the bottom of the ninth. St. Louis on top. One. Cardinals on top. Alex Reyes into the ball game and taking over in right field. It'll be Justin Williams. Saw Reyes pitch in the opener of this season. So Alex Reyes. Two for two and save opportunities in his young career. Our Chevy call to the pen. 
Really nice work out of Giovanni Gallegos tonight with two innings, no runs, one hit. Struck out two. No walks. And now Reyes getting the ninth inning. Talk about it all the time, but the sky's the limit for this young man. And this could be his role early on, seeing him finish off games. Well, you got two young men throwing tonight that pretty much see the future of this bullpen with Hicks and Reyes and, and take your pick who you want to close games. Both electric. Jordan Hicks pitched in the sixth inning. One inning struck out one no hits no walks. That ball lifted in the air to right. Justin Williams is there to make the catch. Brian Anderson retired and now it's Miguel Rojas. Cardinals two outs away from evening up their record at two and two. Rojas one of the four hits for the Marlins tonight. They had a base hit to right grounded out to third and also fly to left. So Reyes one of those guys too that has really shortened up his delivery more compact towards the plate breaking pitch taken low and outside. Jorge Alfaro on deck. And the 1 0 fastball oh. just off the plate. That was being given earlier in the game, wasn't it? Yeah, and last inning, too. Was a, I thought the strike zone was going to get bigger. Oh, well. Ooh. Some velocity for you. Well, with not many fans in the stands. And with the great work of our crew down in Florida, you can hear a little sizzle on that. <laughs> Two balls and a strike on Rojas. Yeah, we're talking about velocity and Yachty being about, uh, behind the plate. Now he came up in 2004. I think how the game has changed. Not a lot it's of velocity on that team back no. in those days. <laughs> well, probably made him a better catcher right away. He had to really work with those guys and really think through the game. Now you got guys with two pitches. Some of them don't throw the second one, mm -hmm. but five times in a game. Like tonight. <laughs> Cardinals trying to make a winner out of Daniel Ponce de Leon. It took him forever to get his first major league win. Finally got it. And now in his first start in 2021 a chance to go to one and oh with five innings. <laughs> Rojas not happy. Carlson the catch. Two away. Nobody on and the final hope for the Marlins is Alfaro. So two outs nobody on. Wow. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. Looked like a little bit of a Nintendo slider right there. Really did. Post game show standing by all the highlights and stats and news around Major League Baseball when we're through here. The 0 one. One ball one strike. 
Alfaro tonight is struck out grounded out flied out. Marlins with a total of four hits Cardinals pitching four different pitchers now they've walked one. And the one one pitch. Lined into center field and a base hit. So they're still alive. Good swing right there. Not trying to do too much. Balls up and firm. There's no reason to take a big swing off guys throwing this hard because it doesn't do you any good. John Birdie 0 for 2 tonight. Two strikeouts, a walk, and the only run scored for Miami. Jazz Chisholm has moved to the on deck circle. That pitch taken low for ball one. And a grounder to DeYoung, force play at second, and the Cardinals take game one of the series. The final of four to one. Daniel Ponce de Leon picks up the win and the Cardinals are now two and two. Nice job right there by the pitching staff. They really needed that game. Ponce with a nice job five innings and then the bullpen Hicks Gallegos and Reyes all come in and do their job. Good to see. Ponce de Leon Hicks Gallegos Reyes as Jimmy mentioned the pitching very good tonight. Cardinals win it four to one. And it's off to the post game show. 4 1 the final. Cardinals win it.